You're traveling to Mexico. Do you think it's safe? Do you think you should leave your hotel? I think you shouldn't leave your hotel. Don't eat the food, don't drink the water, and definitely do not pass go. I'm Juliana from the Discoveries of dishing up practical as fuck tips to help you rock your trip for smart people who like to do cool things in awesome places. Now I have been a travel writer and now a full-time travel blogger for a combined period of seven years so dishing out good travel advice is what I do. Like the sound of that? Well you know what to do, hit the subscribe button and the notifications bell now. One of the things you're going to want to know is, well, when is the best time to travel to Mexico? And the answer is, it depends. Depends on what? Well, Mexico is a huge country. And so you can see that the weather conditions are going to vary depending on the region in which you're traveling. Now, if you take the Yucatan, for example, the rainy season runs between June and October to June to November, depends on the year. And that means that it's going to be wet rainy season, clue is in the name. However, the dry season then starts between June to kind of May time, and that is a much more expensive time to travel. It's peak season. In Tulum, for example, where I stayed for a couple of weeks, the prices go up five times more expensive in the peak season than in the wet season. Now, it depends. The rainy season in Mexico, it is not going to be raining all day, every day. It just depends on how much rain you're willing to take. It's probably gonna rain for a couple of hours and then be gone. Also, another thing that you wanna be thinking about when it's the best time to visit is if you are going to the mountainous regions like Chiapas, it's going to get chilly during parts of the year. So make sure that you bring lots and lots and lots of warm clothing. So where do I go in Mexico? Well, where do you not want to go in Mexico is probably a better question. I spent five weeks in Mexico and I can tell you that everywhere I went, I fell in love with. Each time I was like, oh my God, I love this. Oh my God, I love this. Oh my God, I love this. I started in Tulum, went to Merida, went to Oaxaca, San Cristobal de las Casas. I have posted videos, so check out my guide to Tulum and check out my guide to Oaxaca and check out my guide to my Mexico road trip in general if you're thinking of doing that because believe me when I say it was awesome. Really, you're just gonna wanna think about the kind of thing that you want to do. Mexico City, amazing city, very big, bustling, great cocktails, amazing food parties. Tulum, much more boho chic, you're chilling out on the beach, doing a bit of yoga, bohemian hippie, you get the point. Playa del Carmen is kind of more high rise developed. Merida is the chic capital of the Yucatan. Loads of amazing food, colorful buildings. It just really depends. But what I would say is do try and venture out beyond Cancun. Cancun is great if you wanna stay in a five star hotel, but it's not really the real Mexico, whatever that means. It's a great place if you wanna have a beach holiday, you wanna chill, and I'm not throwing any judgment at you there. But if you want to really get a feel for what Mexico is like and the different regions, then I would just suggest moving beyond that, even within the Yucatan Peninsula. But then there's the big elephant in the room. You can't talk about travel tips for visiting Mexico without talking about safety, because I know it's gonna be on the top of a lot of you people's minds. I'm not saying that Mexico is 100% a safe destination to travel to. You can't say that about anywhere. I am from London, and believe me when I say, I would not say that about London. No shade to my hometown. However, traveling to Mexico, it's unlikely that you're going to run into any serious problems. Gang-related violence is much rarer than the media would have you think, and also, it very rarely, almost never in includes or involves tourists at all. The biggest thing that you're likely to face is petty crime in the same way that you would when you visit most countries around the world. You just want to be taking reasonable precautions. Don't carry around loads of valuables with you. Don't flash around lots of expensive things when you're moving about. And also, you probably just want to take a copy, a photocopy of your passport and your ID and keep it in your hotel safe or keep it wherever you are. Currency, dollar dollar bills, y'all. 
currency is obviously hugely, hugely important while you are traveling in Mexico. And the currency conversion is generally $1 to 18 Mexican pesos, one euro is around 20 Mexican pesos, and one pound is about 24 Mexican pesos. Mexican peso, peso, pesos. Try and just round it up so that you can do it mentally in your, in your head, kind of one is 20 for US, one is 20 for euros, and one is 25, awkward for pounds. That's what I was working on when I was out there takes a little bit of getting used to, but you'll be doing the conversions super quick before you even know it. So you know what the currency is and the conversion rates, but the question is, how do you get it into your hands? Well, the first thing you can do is obviously to convert it before you go. So go to a bank or a post office here, if you're here in the UK, and you can do your currency conversion there, bring some pesos with you so that you have some when you arrive easy peasy. So I generally rely on using an ATM. I have a card that I can use abroad that I don't need to tell my bank every time I go abroad. So I preface this by saying you need to check that first, but I generally just use ATMs when I'm there. Couple of tips for using the ATMs in Mexico. First of all, they do generally tend to charge you a small amount, which is a percentage based on the amount that you're withdrawing. So you can expect to pay a fee there. And also, make sure that you do not accept their currency conversion. I fell for it once, never to fall for it again. So what I'm talking about is when they're like, oh, you want to withdraw 100 Mexican pesos. So maybe you will withdraw that for three pounds. We'll do the currency conversion here. Do not do that. They will rip you off. The rate is dreadful. It will be much better for you to withdraw the full amount in Mexican pesos and let your own bank do the currency conversion because they will do it at a better rate. Just top tip there. The next thing we're gonna be talking about is vaccines. Do you need vaccines to go to Mexico? Well, not really, generally. There is some malaria in Mexico. Generally, it's confined down to the Chiapas region, down in the south, but even then, the risks are very low. So generally, the advice is to make sure that you are using lots and lots of mosquito protection. Same goes for the fact that there is also dengue in Mexico in various parts and there is a risk of the Zika virus. Confined to a couple of states, including Jalisco, I think it is, but you just want to make sure that you are protecting yourself as much as possible against mosquito bites. Budget. If you are thinking about budget, I guess it makes sense to think about your own budget first, but I'll let you know a couple of rough guidelines for how much you can expect things to cost when you're in Mexico. So if you are really on a tight budget and you are budget traveling, I'd say you're looking at a cost of around 30 pounds to 45 dollars per day as a minimum. Upwards of that you can probably get by quite comfortably mid-range budget I'd say probably about 60 pounds 90 dollars a day up to anywhere up to 300 pounds 400 ish dollars a day is going to be your mid-range and then luxury i mean make it rain mexico can be a very very cheap destination to travel in again it just depends on where you are traveling to for example a destination like tulum you can pretty much forget about budget budget traveling yes you can stay in tulum town and you can not stay on the player and you can eat at the local taco places but even things like taxis which you'll need to get around everything is just super expensive however then you can go to a place like Merida which is much more affordable San Cristobal de las Casas much more affordable just think about your budget and I would also plan the destinations that you're planning to travel to accordingly learn some Spanish do not be one of those English speaking people that are like hello I would like a beer please it's just not nice. Just learn a few bits of Spanish. Like honestly, a little bit of Spanish can get you a long way. I'm not expecting you to be like really fluent. I definitely am not. However, there are things that are going to be really useful words that you should just try and learn before you go. Hello, hola, goodbye, adios, thank you, gracias. You can count to 10, uno, dos, tres, Cuatro, cinco, seis, siete, ocho, nueve, diez. See, it's really not hard. What else have I not said? Oh, left and right. Uh, izquierda and derecha. That was left and, and right. Got my 
video backwards here. And of course, una cerveza por favor. Easy peasy. I'm not gonna go into the details of visas for each country. US and most EU citizens can have access for, I think it's 180 days with a visa on arrival. So that's super easy. However, just make sure that you check before you get on your flight, before you book your flight. Also, you will be given a landing card. I really hate this. You need to fill it out and give it to, to immigration when you arrive. Just make sure that you keep the other half because you have have to give it to them when you depart. Power! Now in this power hungry age we obviously need to know that we can use our devices otherwise our lives will completely fall apart. You're talking about 110 volts and it's a two pin adapter so if you're coming from the US you're going to be fine. If you're coming from the UK where we have the world's most awkward plug or from the EU or any other country that doesn't use the two pin 110 volt you're going to need a travel adapter. It really is that simple. Now, if you're wondering what to bring to Mexico, I'm actually gonna do a separate video on that because otherwise we'll be here forever. So just check later if there's a video up. In the meantime, I'm gonna give you a couple of things that you should bring with you when you come to Mexico. So the first of all is sunscreen. That sun is incredibly hot. Please don't get sunburn, it's gonna ruin your trip. Again, also make sure you bring a hat for some sun protection. Sunstroke is not fun, it's just not fun at all. Also, the water in Mexico, we're gonna get onto that, but it's not, it's generally not drinkable tap water. So just make sure that you bring a filtration device, like a filtering water bottle or a live straw or something like that it can get you out of difficult situation if you can't buy water. But also, it's just good for the planet. And this time when we are using so much plastic just being able to bring something that means that you can use you know kind of normal water is, is a very good thing you don't have to use endless endless plastic water bottles that will be floating around in the ocean forever hooray don't be a dick to the planet you also want to bring some insect repellent because the mozzies in mexico are fierce like maybe they've been having some of that salsa or something but like oh my god they can be really intense so make sure you bring mosquito repellent with DEET in it, it's gonna help you. And as I said, there is like Zika and there is a slow, a small risk of malaria and dengue. So you just wanna make sure that you are avoiding all of those things. And also being bitten by mosquitoes kind of sucks, really itchy. Time zone. Now, Mexico is generally GMT minus six hours. However, there is a glitch in that, in that the Quintana Roo Peninsula, I did not say that correctly, which includes Tulum and Cancun and Playa del Carmen is actually GMT minus five. Now here is one top tip for while you are in Mexico, if you are in those areas, is to make sure that you set your phone time manually because sometimes if you're nearby to the border of where the time zone is, um, it can just mess around with your phone. My phone played all kinds of trickery when I was in Tulum and it kept on changing between one hour and the other hour and the other hour and the other hour and I ended up being late for a couple of things. So just make sure that you set your phone manually. If you want to use your mobile phone in Mexico, and I mean today, who doesn't? There are a couple of things that you probably want to check. First of all, does your local normal provider cover your usage in Mexico? If so, you are totally winning. I mean, even here in the UK, mine EE actually did, so that was great. The other thing to do is to just buy a local SIM card. I know there are things like Skyroam, but generally I just find that buying a local SIM card is so easy and so cheap that it works out the most cost effective way to use your mobile when you are abroad. You can buy the local SIM cards in places like supermarkets, the OXO supermarkets, also in some news agents or the equivalent, I don't know what you would call them in, in Spanish, and also you can pick them up in the airport. So just check around. Buying a SIM card is generally really easy. Now travel insurance isn't exactly the most glamorous of subjects but it is something that I literally never ever travel without because I have used it so many times when I've been traveling. It covers theft, cancellations, delays, lost luggage, all of these things. So they say that if you can't afford travel insurance, you can't afford to travel. I would actually agree with them on this point. It is something that you really, really should get. Now make sure that your travel insurance covers any activities that you're going to be doing. So if you are diving, you wanna make sure that your travel insurance covers diving, other things like 
horse riding. I do a lot of horse riding when I'm traveling. Ensure that your travel insurance covers the activities because the last thing you want to do is to injure yourself doing one of those activities and to find out that your travel insurance won't cover you for it. Accommodation wise, I know you're gonna be thinking, well, okay, how much does accommodation cost me? And budget travel destinations, you can generally look at hostels being around 10 US dollars a night, which is about seven, seven pounds 50, but it really does vary on the destination. Now, I have to admit my backpacking days are kind of behind me. So I tend to travel on the mid range end of the scale. And I was generally paying about 40 pounds, uh, $65 or to 80 pounds, uh, which is about $110 a night. So that is bet for between a three to five star hotel, depended on the location, but it was just generally mid range hotels. That's your price. I mean, we did stay in a couple of five star hotels and even then they were costing us about 80 90 pounds a night uh, which is about 130 pounds uh, US dollars so it really just varies on the destination but it is a cheap place to travel so if you've got the budget blow it on some nice accommodation oh my god food can we take a moment to just appreciate Mexican food it is so freaking good <sighs> I just need a moment just need Okay, now food in Mexico is understandably and predictably amazing. You can try local specialities um, in Oaxaca. There's lots and lots of like local tlaudas, mole, which is kind of what turned into the bastardized version of chili con carne, but is like a million times better and almost nothing like chili con carne. So who knows? Rice, beans, tacos. Oh my God, the tacos are amazing. There are lots and lots of amazing restaurants in, in Mexico. I dined in Pujol, which is actually one of the best restaurants in the world and it is pricey but it is fabulous and i also dined in loads of street food snack places bought tacos uh, from local taquerias i mean i just tried a huge variety of food when i was in mexico if you want to keep costs down street food is the way forward you can also buy food in the markets and cook it at home but to be honest i would just say that because it is so cheap to buy street food from taquerias and different stalls um i i, I personally wouldn't bother but it's up to you um and if you do have the budget just go to some of the cool places to eat that there are in the different Mexican towns. Um, so like I said, Pujol in Mexico City was amazing. You should watch my video about that. Uh, also, we went to Khan in Tulum where they cook everything on wood-fired grills. I mean, literally insane. So you're just not gonna go hungry in Mexico is basically what I'm saying. Transportation and getting around. Now, the cheapest way to get around is to use the colectivos, the collective buses, um, mini buses. Now, they are super cheap. You can use those to get about within destinations like Tulum or in between various destinations. But even though they are very, very cheap, they are also very, very slow. So you should take that into account if you are on a mega budget. Those are probably gonna be your best option. And then, taxis are more expensive generally obviously used for smaller distances depends on the location they can be very very cheap but they can also like in Tulum be incredibly expensive so I just want to check the general prices for the destination and make sure that you have a rough idea of how much you're going to be paying before you get into the taxi because a lot of the taxis don't have meters so you should agree a price before you get in so just kind of have a rough idea before you go if you're talking about long longer distances you have three main options the first one is to drive which is what I did we drove all around Mexico on a Mexico road trip I'm going to link to that and it was fabulous just don't drive at night in remote regions and generally you're fine there are areas of Mexico that you probably shouldn't drive within but really you're probably not going to be going to those anyway the second option is to take the ADO buses or the intercity buses on my previous trip to Mexico I actually took some ADO buses they're very clean they're very efficient they're really easy to, um, to book, so you can just book them online or you can book them in the bus station, not a problem. So ADO buses, 
also very good. And then your third option is to fly, which is great if you're taking talking about longer distances, so from Cancun to, to, to Mexico City, for example, all of those, those kind of longer trips you can fly. Mexico has a lot of cheap carriers um, which you can use to book your tickets your cheap flights but you know kind of I, I try and avoid flying unless it's necessary and so if it's really for short destinations why would you bother tipping tipping now as a Brit this is something that I, I just feel like it's one of the things that I really have to check myself when I go abroad because in, in the UK we just you know we we tip people in like restaurants and bars if there's been service but but really it's not it's not huge huge tipping culture and um, whereas if you're from the US I know that you're a lot more used to a big tipping culture tipping culture in Mexico is probably more similar to the US so there is a lot of tips expected you should be tipping obviously in bars and restaurants but then you're also tipping um, you know if you if people have helped you uh, at the airport if um, you're tipping like the the chambermaids or the people who are cleaning your room and um, just leaving small tips is expected so make sure you have lots of change when you arrive at the airport because it's just going to be helpful from the get-go for tipping those those people and, and saying thank you for their service i will add to that though that in some upmarket restaurants the tip is already included in your bill so make sure that you check your bill it will be there as propina propina means tip and so if there is propina on your on your receipt on your bill the tip's already been included thumbs up now hands up if you feel a bit awkward about haggling hmm. it is expected though in mexico so it depends on where you are obviously don't go into like louis vuitton and be like i give you five dollars for that i don't know what that accent was sorry depends on where you are markets informal vendors you can you're kind of expected to haggle a bit if the, the general rule of the thumb that is if it sounds like it's too much it probably is although don't also then try and like haggle for ages i see this all the time when i'm traveling people like haggling like crazy over like five pesos which is like 2p and they're like no and then people get really angry haggle but there's no need to be really rude about it what about traveling solo as a woman well i did travel solo as a woman not on this trip on the previous trip i was actually in mexico for two weeks on my own from my experience you know there's a lot of cat calling there's a lot of you know I can't whistle but um, it's very rarely threatening or, or means anything but do use just normal safe precautions that you should do when you are abroad just be aware of your surroundings don't walk in sketchy areas at night if in doubt ask a local you know they're gonna know the best but just use your common sense water now um there is a, a term for the thing that happens to you when you maybe drink the tap water in mexico and it's called montezuma's revenge uh you really really want to avoid that if possible and just don't drink the tap water unless it is marked specifically as potable that means it's it's drinkable water non-potable don't drink it most tap water is non-potable so you either want to make sure that you are buying water bottles or like i said um, you should bring some kind of water filtration system which is going to be able to turn the non-potable water into drinkable water it still might not taste great but as i said it's going to help you cut down on plastic bottle usage so that's no bad thing you can use a steri pen um, you can also use the the like life straw there are various ways that you can go about it i actually use a steri pen myself and find it incredibly useful for that now i know this is only going to apply to some of you but if you are planning on driving in mexico then here are a few tips we drove over 1500 kilometers in mexico so i think I can say I know a little bit about driving in Mexico now. One of the things I'd say is generally the advice is don't drive at night in remote areas. I wasn't even very worried about driving between destinations. Some people were like, are you crazy? 
but I was like, I'll be fine, we'll be fine. And we were, but do not drive at night in remote areas. It does pay to check the route that you're planning to drive on and see if there are any travel advisories. Uh, one thing is the road between Palenque and Chiapas. That like is a bit weird and there are various travel advisories, but we spoke to a few locals and they were like, as long as you don't drive at night, you're gonna be fine. We drove through, it was all fine, not a problem. Uh, the other thing that you are going to notice in Mexico Mexico when you're driving is topes. What are topes? Topes are speed bumps but like some of them are crazy and it's like they're out to wreck your car. You'll just be driving along on a highway and guess what there's a massive speed bump in the middle of the highway. It is nuts. You have to be incredibly vigilant when you are driving in Mexico because some of those topes are vicious, vicious like I thought we were almost gonna total our car on one because we didn't see it. We just turned around a corner on a really fast road and uh, and hit a tope, bam. But it was okay, didn't make the windscreens go off though, whoops. So just make sure that you are keeping an eye out for topes. Other than that, you drive on the left, which is obviously the wrong side for me, but the right side for the rest of the world, so most of you are okay with that. Driving in Mexico, very, very easy. Now, here's one that doesn't get talked about often, actually, is swimming. Now, this might sound all like, oh, you know, be very, very, very careful. But swimming, there are a lot of riptides um, on the Mexican coast. Speak to the locals, see what they say. Uh, don't try not to swim if there's a riptide. If you do get caught in one, apparently the advice is to swim horizontally alongside the shore until you're out of the riptide, rather than trying to swim against the riptide because you'll just never win. The other thing is crocodiles. Now in the Yucatan Peninsula, for sure, there are actually a lot of crocodiles hanging out in those beautiful like lagoons so you just need to check again with locals before you go jumping in there because as we know crocodiles can be very very aggressive and are not the most friendly and the last thing you want to do on your Mexico trip is to end up being eaten by a crocodile. Toilets in Mexico I thought actually were generally quite fine I don't know why I sound so surprised about that that's like so patronizing but you do want to make sure that you bring your own toilet roll as much as possible because it's not always in the toilet. So if you also are walking past into the toilet and you see that there is like a big roll of toilet outside by the sinks or something, you want to grab some because there is not going to be toilet rolls inside the cubicles. Um, again, just with the toilet roll, make sure you put it into the bin. Do not flush it because it, they just, it, Mexico, plumbing just cannot deal with that don't flush the toilet roll put it in the bin and then we're talking about books and films about Mexico just to get you super excited about your trip obviously that is Frida now if you go to Mexico City Frida Kahlo is going to be all up in your grill Mexico Frida Kahlo big famous artist you know the one with the monobrow Frida, the movie's really good with Salma Hayek. I very much enjoyed it. Um, you've got Amores Peros, um, which is crazy kind of art film. I remember watching it in uni, thinking it was super cool and so chic. Um, but that's a very good film. Roma, obviously. Now, I feel like I, maybe I'm the only person in the world that didn't actually love Roma. I have to be honest, didn't love it at all. I mean, Alfonso Cuaron, yeah, just not for me, but Roma set in Mexico, Roma in Mexico City. You have got your staples like your rough guide to Mexico and your Lonely Planet. I actually slightly preferred the Lonely Planet. I've always been a big fan of rough guides, but I just am not sure that they're quite as good anymore. I would pump for the Lonely Planet if you only bring one and you really should because like, they're weighty, right? Oh, and how could I forget Walking the Americas by Leveson Wood. Some of you might have seen Leveson's um, TV programs. He walked through the Americas and his book is really fascinating. There's some quite cool, weird encounters. It's not a Mexico book per se, but it's, it's interesting and it does feature Mexico. And then we're just rounding things off with a few handy tips that are probably more applicable to just 
travel generally than specific to Mexico but I like to include them because they're just handy if you're thinking about booking your trip. I tend to book my hotels through booking.com because they have such a big variation and variety of properties um, that you can see on there. Uh, booking.com is really handy airbnb obviously if you like to travel more independently and, and generally it's good if you like to have self-catering options and just have a bit more space obviously there are problems with airbnb as to whether it's ethical blah 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 i will leave you on that but airbnb is obviously an option um for flights now my favorite flight booking app is skyscanner it's just really useful it's very easy to see and compare flights between different airlines and different dates and mess around with that for ages but one of my recent discoveries is an app called hopper and Hopper is actually what I used to book my flights for Mexico this time because it was ridiculously cheap. Now, bearing in mind that most flights from the UK, from London to um, Cancun for that time that I was going, which was in November, were looking at hovering around the £700 mark to fly direct. I found those same flights on Hopper for £400, that's return, um, direct with British Airways. And the reason is apparently that Hopper gets exclusive deals because it's not online, because you can't access it through a website, because it's app-based only. So the airlines give Hopper some really good deals which crop up from time to time. I have checked for a few different places. It's not always the case, but Hopper is a brilliant, brilliant app. It also usefully tells you whether your flights are like to get more expensive or cheaper in the coming weeks or months if you wait so if you say you put in your flight dates and you want to book and it's like okay this is how much it costs today but it's likely to get you know 30 pounds cheaper if you wait another couple of weeks it uses ai i mean those computers right they're crazy and the last thing is group tours now i know that i have been a big advocate and i would suggest highly highly recommend that you can travel through mexico on your own or as part of a couple or with a friend and it's not a problem but i know that's not going to be for some of you i generally for um group tours like to use intrepid travel or g adventures both of them have tours in mexico so you can check that out i've also heard very good things about original travel so you might want to check those out as well and if you are under 30 which clearly <laughs> i am not anymore um youth sta travel is very good and does very good group tours uh, also does student discounts so i hope that you found this video useful for planning your trip to mexico please like it, subscribe to the channel, share it with anyone who's going to be traveling to Mexico and stay tuned because there are lots and lots of Mexico travel tips and Mexican travel videos on this channel and I hope that you stick around to watch a few more.